folks. Welcome to Sneak Peek Season 2. Super stoked to have you here. Today with me, I have Sarah from Hex. And for those of you who don't know Hex, I might be biased, but Hex is one of the most beautiful piece of enterprise design software that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not kidding when I say it. But first of all, I want to see, Sarah, you got to do the sneak peek gesture. Let's see you do it. Yeah, there we go. So I am looking at the Figma file that you have. And curious to know, on the left side, I see a lot of pages. When we're in the main, what is main? Yeah, so I think it's helpful to maybe take a step back and show the template that we base all of our Figma files on in the design team. So we basically start every new project based on a template. New project, we call it Duplicate Me because it contains everything you need to get started. So like the thumbnail that we can rename and these four pages just to set the organization for us. So main is like our, it has like the racing flag. So anything that's like ready to go and finalize and ready to ship and build is what we put in there. Or if there's any like work in progress and sketches or working area and scratch pad. Research is like anywhere we want to dump in any screenshots or notes. Yeah, basically as we're ideating and shaping the de design and feature. And archive is just pretty much a dumping ground for anything that we toss but don't want to throw away, maybe refer back to, but may not be um, immediately relevant or something, anything we're going to build. As you can see, it's extremely different from what, what we had originally, but we have the original thumbnail. I have some designs in the main page and also the wireframes page archive and research i put uh, i guess I, I didn't even put anything in research um, sometimes i don't even use the pages it's just for me as a designer okay there's some archive wireframe but every designer has their own style i would say and this is what's worked for me what ends up happening is tickets are more like post later stage development we find out that there are minor little iterations that we need to do along the process to make it to the finish line, like the long tail. These, I started making these like test tube icon pages, like ideating on, like they're similar to the wireframe scratch pad type of page where I'm thinking about other solutions for a very specific feature in this larger, broader feature. So I, that's how I like using pages a lot for very specific things. So. I did a specific like UX interactions of this calculations feature. If you were to go into specific uh, feature that you're exploring here, it's reorder columns. So when you go to reorder columns, you have a lot of iterations going on here. How do you figure out which was the latest one or which is the most recent one that everyone can view? I basically take advantage of the green ready for the flag. That That's just the big highlight and signal I give to that the engineer can see and be like, okay, this is what I need to pay attention to. I do my best to make that the only one, like I'd send them a direct link or before they had this feature, I would just gray out any other designs that I didn't want them to see, but still wanted to keep around if I wanted to further iterate and sketch. And as part of your handoff to the developers, is there any other information you add in this handoff process? Like I see that you have the flow here, the section that you mark ready for dev, but is there anything else that you annotate or mention? I do try to add some little notes and more cover interactions. I will, yeah, that's basically, I for the Figma's dev mode feature, I really, mainly I use it for just the screen flag, obviously, and... What's that black text there? There's like, I saw a couple of black boxes. Is it like you're using it for naming or hover interaction? This text? The rectangular. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's some rectangular uh, boxes here. Yeah, this is our tool tooltip component that on hover. So I do at least try to like mark uh, the different states of these, of each button and make sure, okay, yeah, how do we make this interaction clearer? Maybe we add some interaction on hover. 
And, but yeah, I think in this one, actually, even though I marked it ready for a dev, I put in a couple of options because I also just want to treat it as like a conversation. Like I tell my engineer, like, Hey, take a look at this and let me know what you think. I always like gathering opinions from engineers and seeing if they have other ideas or thoughts. So yeah, it's mainly just to get them to pay attention. It's not as much so as this is the final thing. And if you have any changes, I'm going to like edit the specific frame. It's not really like that. And then I see that you've got a, a whole page dedicated to error handling as well. Yeah, this was more of trying to figure out how we first, like how errors are going to work and how are we going to manage them in the front end. This is very early on in the, more like the shaping phase, like the way we handle errors turned out to be, turned out to have an impact on the overall like experience of using this calculations feature. So this was just to like gather notes and orient ourselves on, okay, how do you run into this error in the first place? And can we, what are some like high level UX solutions we can work out to get around it. I think one, actually, one of the things I did here was because we're trying to work out with engineering, like the best possible uh, experience for the user, especially when you run into non-ideal states, we really need to make sure it's a pleasant experience and it could go pretty badly, especially in the future, like calculations or most people are familiar with an Excel and things like just work and don't break the, the way our product is built in the back end doesn't mean it might lead to some inconsistent patterns. So we were trying to figure out how to make these non-ideal states as not unexpected as possible. So I tried to actually mock up like one of the proposed flows from the engineers and try to show that this is not actually a great flow and then propose otherwise, like we need to push for a better way to handle these errors. So what's really interesting is you said that you Whenever an engineer recommends a solution to you and you think it's not good, you just don't tell them right away that, hey, that's a terrible solution. You actually mock it up, you design it, and then show it to them. Not always. It doesn't happen often. But I think this is a rare case where it was like, I think this is going to really impact the experience of the product. And in order to make it clear why it's not the best experience, we, I think it makes sense to easily mock it up. And then yeah. you also have this annotation here. How did I get here? What's, what's the re reasoning behind that? Do you always do that in the error state just to show how the error occurs? This is particularly for this feature. There is a series of steps to get into this non-ideal state. So I was trying to show how you would get into this state. It's trying to break down the logic that the way we were going to process the logic and like the origin of this error. But then it was just, the point was that it's really weird to see that to get into the state when you didn't even do anything wrong in the surface area. But it was, a lot, it was really complicated, but basically because of our logic and the way we built things, you could see errors without having even done anything different, like changed or edited your table here. So it was just like, just to show that is a very weird flow. I was trying to mock it out, but I think this, does, this rarely happens. And I think at the end, this mock wasn't like huge. It didn't steer the conversation that much, to be honest. I think I showed it to a couple of people, but I think we got some more people in the discussion and we ended up like convening and deciding this was like a critical like experience issue that we needed to solve. I personally, the thing I took away was the way you explain how to arrive to this error state. So instead of just dropping, hey, these are the screens for the error state, at least for someone who's new to this flow, I can at least read how did I get here to get some context on how to recreate this state. Yeah. And that also just gives a visual picture of what are we actually building and why does it feel weird. This actually is going to feel really weird. So just some 
I, I think I, I learned through this project, like part of a designer's job is also to just be like, show, don't tell. And like sometimes showing involves like telling the story of what might not be a great design. Something I noticed of going through your Figma files is that in prototype page and some other pages as well, you have arrows that show like this arrow right here that tells me how the flow progresses. Even though in prototype, it's linked together in the prototype uh, section. But even then, you have the arrows there. So I was curious to know, what was the reasoning behind also having the arrows in also in the prototype? Because it's already linked in the prototype. Are you talking about like ones like these where there are both like prototypes and... Yes, they're a mix of both. So I was wondering what was the use case for doing both of them? Yeah, so I like to use just flat like sharing these frames with all the screens at once to just to give a very quick overview without having to click into a prototype link and do a quick through. I actually use prototypes for myself as in I like to click through it myself, at least when I'm sharing internally with my team to demonstrate, oh, here's how the flow is going to work and I'm going to record how, like a loom and show how I'm going to click through it to show you the functionality. So this is old, so this is a bit off, but that's mainly why I, yeah, it's a, when I say I use prototypes for myself, that's what I mean. Just to, I like to show, I like to share like engineers and my product manager, like a recording of how it works rather than give them a link to Figma. Cause I think that's just easier to access. And then for building and handoff purposes, just giving them a link to this section with the annotations also. I just want to make sure they're able to orient themselves on what is this frame showing and how is, does it relate to this next frame here and there, like all in one view. And you've even named your frames that kind of like correspond to like what's happening, like filter open, oh. that other frame is open, something like name something else. It's, it's mainly because the sections feature in Figma, when you create a section, it keeps the frame names and it bothers me when it's just frame 5,000 something. Yeah. But I mean, that's as much organization as I do. I don't really name my layers. Fair enough. Oh, I love this. This is really good. I'm just wondering what else is unique here. Because every, every designer is unique in the way they approach. And every time I look at a designer's file, like I get new ideas that I did not think about before. Like from your file, I already got the idea that they're just having a robust process around error handling and thinking about it from the early part of the design process, thinking about the error state. I think that was very, that was my takeaway from your file, because like you said, that could also impact the overall experience. Usually what I've seen is designers focus on the error state at the end when the engineers ask them, all right, what are the error states look like? I think actually I, that happens to most of my projects too. Like how do we handle a non-ideal cases? That's more at a later stage. But I think this project was very unique in that when the engineers were building the early, the very first like iteration, just to get the functionality right, they'll discover, oh, okay, there's this complexity or nuance that we need to figure out. And then it turns out with this feature, this might've been a very big complexity that needed to figure out. And we had to talk about it early on because it would impact the UX a lot. And with the comments, I see a lot of comments there. Is it comments from engineers, comments from other designers? Yeah, it depends on the stage and what kind of what this design or section is for. This is very scratch pad, like high level. How do we categorize and handle different levels of errors and surface them and like with more rough visuals. So I think Kevin, our product manager got in and I got some feedback on how we would treat like a specific type of error based on this understanding of what that, what NAN means, because that's like a very specific like data term. Do you find it much easier to just quickly uh, get opinions from your product manager? in the Figma file via comment itself, rather than doing back and forth over Slack? If it's for a specific area in the design, I will do that. Like I will 
sometimes like paying a product manager on a very specific place on the design or in this case, yeah, like we'll kick off a discussion on like this, like this icon for those type of discussions. I think Figma is great, but um, Slack works fine as well. I think because Slack brings in more visibility to the broader team because I think not everybody in our team is super active in Figma, to be honest. I think like most people are in Slack and we've actually discussed this as a team. Like we're trying to actually bring more discussions t to Slack rather than have threads in Figma because it's not just all, all of the discussions. Yeah, they might be design focused, but it also ends up being like very high level or more back end or like, yeah, product discussions. And then do you resolve all the comments as soon as uh, the discussion's over? Or do you keep them just for context for anyone else to see as well? Yeah, I always keep them around. I, I never resolve. Also, I rarely archive either. I just, I keep stuff around with me. Yeah, that's just a personal thing. The only things I resolve are like to like reminders to myself. Oh, I need to fix this. It's a note to self and then I'll Sorry. resolve it tasks I have to do. Do you have an example of a task that you can show that you resolved? I'm just curious to see how you use like the comments as a task. Usually the, if I use it as a task, I, it's like I'll finish it and with the same day or within a day or yeah, if, it, if it's a bigger task, I would probably write it somewhere else. It's very, very small point. Oh, I should probably use a better icon than this one. And that should be a very quick 20, 30 minute task. This should be filterable, okay. Like, this is, if we wanted an example of, like, when would I ever resolve comments, like, that would be the, the case, but even that case is not that common for me.